good morning and welcome to church another Sunday and the sun is shining which is a, a change isn't it God bless you all we miss you uh, I guess more than anything else we miss just being together in the Lord, house of the Lord and uh, taking our time to worship him together and give him the praise and honour but thank you Ian for leading us in worship this morning we truly appreciate um, everything that everybody is doing and um, this morning I want to take it a little bit slower uh, I'm tired we want a devotional uh, this morning just to spend some time in the presence of the Lord and just to get him to speak to us again. We've had a brilliant week, haven't we? The camp meetings have been such a blessing and I know such a challenge as well. Many of you have commented publicly uh, on social media. Many of you have s uh, sent me stuff privately to tell me how much you've been blessed and challenged. And so we just want to thank all the preachers that have taken the time out this week to do such an amazing job of just sharing the word of God with us. Had a great time, just a real blessed time. And if you haven't had a chance to catch up with that stuff, it's both on YouTube and Facebook still. And it's there for the endurance. So, you know, to any time you want a, a word, there's plenty of words on there um, that we've taped and uh, put up there. So just take advantage of all the social media, everything that we're putting up. Um, we're having a bit of a quieter week this week, as you can imagine. But please take advantage of all the stuff that we've already done. And uh, dig deep. All the Shirley stuff still on there. Let me encourage you, there's th probably three or 400 of Shirley's messages on uh, YouTube. So you want to go back and listen to some great stuff, uh, then do that as well. Um, we will not forget her. We love her. And I know she's be rejoicing this morning in heaven as we are with you and uh, praising God together. So uh, let's pray right at the beginning. And then I've got a few announcements and then uh, we're going to uh, get right into the word. But... Um, Right at the beginning, I just want to bring our two sisters again, Angela, uh, to the Lord, and Liz as well. Angela, I spoke to yesterday, her breathing is so much better. The fluids off her lungs is uh, easing, so they're taking less fluid off her lungs um, every day, uh, which is fantastic, and they're really happy with her. So she's going to wait for a couple of weeks for a hospital appointment about her chemotherapy, but at the moment, she's in great spirits, uh, enjoying uh, taking a day at a time, and uh, she's shielding, obviously. So just pray for her and Graham that God would bless them. Uh, Liz has been on dialysis for two days and her to rest day today. So we're praying God's going to intervene, that her kidneys will be a whole lot better. And as I look at uh, what they're going to need to do with uh, her heart and the rest of the stuff in this next week, that God would really give the surgeons and doctors the wisdom to know what to do and when to do it. So let's just pray for our sisters and for anybody else that needs a touch. From the Lord, we continue to pray over our town. Um, obviously, this murder over these last couple of weeks in the Clifton has been horrendous. And I want you to stand in prayer for our town. In fact, I'm going to encourage us in September, uh, probably next week, to start going out perhaps in threes or fours. So, so we're supposed to go out in no more than sixes from different households, but in threes or fours maybe. Walk the streets, essentially, uh, when, it's, when it's safe to do so. Maybe a few of you go up the beacon. And let's pray over our town. Um, God is still in charge, but we don't want any more of that in the Clifton, and we certainly don't want any more hassle around town. We want it to be a place where God dwells by his Holy Spirit, don't we? So let's pray for ask God to bless us today. Father, I just want to thank you in the name of Jesus for your goodness and for your graciousness. And we pray for Angela and Graham right now, that you pour out your Spirit upon them. Lord, would you heal Angela totally from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. I pray she'll come out of this stronger. Lord, she already says that she feels your presence in a way that she's never felt you before. So bless her, we pray today. I know that she'll be watching. So would you bless her and Graham, put your anointed upon their household. For Liz in hospital, as she takes this rest day today from the dialysis, I just pray that her body will come into function and order properly in the name of Jesus, that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will be upon her. Bless Steve and Lydia, we pray as well, as they uh, have to watch from afar, really. God, would you strengthen them. And Lord, we pray for Sedgley today, that town where you've placed us, that village on a hill, that Lord is so significant, we believe in the purposes of God for this day and generation. So we pray from the beacon right down into Gornal and beyond, that Father, the Holy Spirit would fall and that many people would be saved. The principalities and powers we bind this morning in the name of Jesus, and we release your anointing, Lord Jesus, upon your word and upon this communion time together in your precious name. Amen. Well, as a leadership team, we've taken some decisions. So September, we've decided that we're going to get the building ready to open up. Don't get too excited because we haven't got a proper date and we haven't decided how we're going to open. 
but we feel that we should make some steps of faith. We've prayed, haven't we, and believed God together. So September, we are going to make sure that building is cleaned from top to bottom. Um, we've already had volunteers to do the garden and uh, the, the car park at the back. Um, I need some help. There's some rubbish around the back in, in terms of a couple of car parking spaces. We probably need to saw all that up and put it in, a, in, a, in some backs of some cars or if you've got a small van and get it down the tip, let's clear out the car park. Make sure that's fit for purpose. We're going to get the boiler serviced. We're going to get everything cleaned. We're going to get some cameras put up so we can stream from church. And uh, we're going to get everything ready. So if you can help in any way, I know we've got some brickwork to do at the front, some tiles to be changed, lots of small jobs, um, bits of painting to do. Can you contact either me or Andy Bench? Andy's going to be leading on this for us. So the month of September is a preparation month for the building. Uh, it's been furloughed, we've mothballed it. So from, um, from sort of Tuesday onwards, uh, we're gonna to start to work on that building and make sure it's fit for purpose. Because we're believing God to be back together very soon, praising him like the way we should, and see many new lives transformed by the power of the gospel. So would you believe with us as we take some faith steps? Um, we'll see what God does, see what happens when the schools get opened up as well. I've just been having a chat with Josh about that. Um, I think it's important that we get the building ready in faith to believe that there's going to be a day we can sit together again properly. And then until that time, we'll start to stream from church and bring stuff to, from you from the building. So we start to move in, even if it's virtually. So would you help us? If you can help us, that'd be really good. And uh, let's get the building ready for God to move. Uh, this week, um, just look out for the Thursday Bible study and Tuesday night Zoom prayer meeting. And um, take advantage of what God is doing as we still do things online together. Let's just um, come around the communion right now. Um, I haven't got a scripture for you today. I've read from the Psalms the last couple of weeks. But I still want us to have that theme in God we trust. And um, I've got a lot of scriptures in what I'm going to say as I preach to you this morning. Uh, I, I, I nearly changed my mind earlier, but it was funny as, as I rose this morning... And uh, I've lined up all my podcasts of all the preachers that I want to listen to. And this morning, as I clicked onto the first preacher, not knowing what he was going to say, he actually read my verses that I'm going to finish with this, this morning. And I just knew that God was just saying, just take it and trust and believe me that I've got the right word. So I'm going to speak to you in a moment. But before we do that, I just want us for a moment just to close our eyes and to use those words, in God we trust. Just meditate on those words, in God we trust. We trust you this morning with our lives, Lord. Let's just take the moment that we trust you, Lord, with our lives. Maybe you want to say this out loud or in your hearts as you're sitting here watching this morning. We trust you with our families. We do, don't we? We trust him with our families. As difficult as those circumstances can be sometimes, we trust him with our families. We trust him with our marriages. We trust him with our finances. We trust him in our church. Well, actually, it's not our church, it's his church. He said he'd build his church. In God we trust this morning. Lord, we trust you. And we trust him because he's made some very precious promises to us. You know, in the book of Hebrews, it talks about a better covenant. God made a covenant with Abraham told him that he'd bless him and multiply him and his family, his family would fill the earth. As I said to you the last couple of weeks, the first words that Adam heard from the mouth of God was a word of blessing. Be fruitful, multiply and fill the earth. Then evil came on the face of the earth through sin. And only eight were saved as Noah and his family went through the flood. But again, you look at those verses concerning Noah as he leaves the ark and he sacrifices the Lord. The same words come again from the mouth of God. Noah be fruitful, multiply, and fulfill the whole earth. And under a new covenant and a better agreement, I want to prophesy to you as a church and to me this morning, be fruitful, fill the whole earth. Let's take dominion of Sedgley. Let's lay hold of what God has got for us because we're trusting in his sure and certain promises. And this morning as we break bread together, we declare in faith in God alone we trust. So we break bread together in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your body that is broken for us.
Bible talks about the cup of agreement. The cup that speaks of a promise made and a promise kept. And so again, we take of the cup of the new agreement in his blood and we drink it this morning in the name of Jesus. Hey. Maybe if you haven't already, I know we get plenty of comments on Sunday mornings. If you haven't already, why don't you just say a big hello to everybody that's on there if you're on there live. If you're not on there live, you can continue to put your comments and your cheers and your smiles and your thumbs up. I know one of you that eat angry faces by mistake, don't worry. We understand you're not angry with us. Um, but just have some fun this morning. Just tell one or two people good morning, hello, welcome to church. And let's just really encourage each other. You know, as we've been watching this week, there's been dozens, if not hundreds of us, watching the camp meetings and just enjoying God's word. So uh, enjoy this morning the fellowship remotely. And I'll promise you very soon we'll be back together again. But uh, while we've got this time, let's just uh, be different, creative. Ring a few people this week. Say hello to people you've not spoken to for a while. Um, if you're worried about anybody, give me a shout out and let you know how everybody is. Uh, I'm telling you, most people are doing fine, uh, but obviously just missing each other. So, um, okay, type away, and then we're going to come around God's word. Father, as we're just uh, greeting each other and blessing each other, I pray a blessing now upon your word in the name of Jesus. I pray that we'll just have some fun today. God, we want to let your word dwell in us richly. And I pray as I preach now that the anointing of the Holy Ghost will come upon me and through me and to me in Jesus' name. I just pray none of me and all of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In God we trust. So we've been saying, haven't we, over these last few weeks, that we want to make sure that we put our trust in God alone. Salvation alone comes from our God. That's what they say in the book of Revelation. There's that huge roar from, from the angels. Salvation belongs to our God who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. And then we looked at Psalm 20. Some trust in horses and chariots, but we will trust this morning in the name of our God. And then we walked ourselves through Psalm 62 on our first session around this and then use these scriptures again last week but let me remind you of the goodness of God in Psalm 62 for God alone my soul waits in silence from him comes my salvation there's no other name given in heaven and earth by which we shall be saved but the name of Jesus we can trust him this morning with our lives and with our eternal security he holds us in the palm of his hands and he will never let us go never let us go Verse 2, he alone is my rock and my salvation, my defence, when you're in trouble, my strong tower. I will not be shaken or disheartened. It's so easy in these moments to be shaken and to be disheartened because of the world situation. But I want you to know that God is for us and he's going to keep us safe. He's going to look after us. And, you know, I, I said to you last week, I love that old chorus, I go to the rock of my salvation, the stone that builders rejected. I go to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. The mountain, the rock of God stands by us this morning and we can rejoice and be sure and certain of his goodness in our lives. I will not be shaken or disheartened. Maybe you want to make that a confession. Maybe you want to shout it out now. If you've had such a bad week and things have gone a, bit, a little bit awry for you, shout it out. I will not be shaken. I will not be disheartened. And then we looked at 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8, a New Testament scripture said exactly the same thing. God is able to make all grace abound to you. That's not some grace. That's not a little bit of grace. That's not even just a half measure grace. That is all grace abound to you so that in all things, not a few things, in all things, at all times, not sometimes, at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. God has made some incredible promises to us that he was going to bless us and continue to bless us. So this morning, I want to remind you of God's faithfulness. He is faithful. I was, um, I've, been, I've seen a few of the guys this week individually, um, had a chance to share with a few of the lads. Uh, it's been nice to, to get fellowship one-on-one. -on -one. Let me encourage you to do that. You can do that. You can visit people in their gardens. And so if you can visit people from church, and distance yourself and have some fellowship please do i've been able to chat with some of the lads and pray with them and as i've shared some of my testimony with some of the guys that have not heard fully of what god has done in my life from being a young man i've been encouraged again that god has been so good to me and so faithful to my family god's such a blessing 
And one of the one of the uh, the scriptures I love, and I've loved to sing it as a chorus, and I've loved to have quoted it in my prayer time is this Lamentations three and twenty two to twenty three. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O God. The Amplified Version says this, It is because of your loving kindness that we are not consumed. Because his tender compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great and beyond measure is your faithfulness, O God. So we bless the Lord this morning for his faithfulness, that he's been so good to us, so, so kind to us. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 to 13 says this, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability to bear it, but with temptation also provide a way of escape that you will be able to endure under it. God wants to make a way for us today. He's not going to bring us to the place where we're totally broken and in despair. He's going to provide a way of escape. And some of you need to hear that. I've said it so many times in church and so, so many individuals. This is not the end of the road. This is but just the bend in the road. And God has got a way. He's got a million ways of meeting you and meeting me at the point of our need. But the clear thing that I want to get across to you this morning, whether you're facing rocky roads or difficult times today, our God is faithful. He does not change. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. The same faithful God that stood with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the fiery furnace stands with you. The same God that went into the lion's den with Daniel and kept him overnight with those roaring lions and is going to keep you. The same God that stood with the children of Israel as the Red Sea split and they walked right through on dry land is with us this morning. The same Jesus that was um, walked the seas of Galilee and encouraged his disciples is encouraging us this morning. In fact, he's praying for us in heaven. He's at the right hand of the Father and he's making intercession for us. Our God is faithful. Our God truly is faithful. Let me turn you to just one verse that you will know oh so well. And then I just want to bring us to the little story that I want to use from the Old Testament to talk about God's incredible faithfulness to us. Romans 8 verse 28. Most of you will know this. Most of you could write, recite it right now before I even read it. But I want you to hear it afresh this morning. I want this next session to be almost like a prophetic word from the heart of God to you and to me. That our faith might rise towards God. The whole of these last three weeks have been better. It's been trusting in God more and more. Who to else can we go? Some of the disciples cleared off and, and then Jesus said to his close disciples, do you want to go as well? And they looked at him and said, Lord, who can we go? You have the words of eternal life. And I believe God wants to raise our faith this morning and for us to know totally that we can trust him in everything. We can trust his word and we can know that he's faithful towards us. Here we go. And we know that in all things, not some things, in all things, did you get that? Do you know, in all things, God works for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Now, there's a couple of prerequisites there. For we know that God works all things together to good for those who, firstly, prerequisite number one, love him. If you love him this morning, if you've drawn near to God, he has drawn near to you. If you love him, he loves you more. You might say, oh, Steve, I really love God. You have no idea how much he loves you this morning. So number one, things will transpire for your benefit and blessing if you love God. And number two, if you're those that are called according to his purpose, those that are walking out his will and plan. Things are not going to go well, well for you if you decide to run off and sin and do a thousand things that you shouldn't be doing. Although God can use that and bring you back. But the two prerequisites here is that if you love God and you are part of his plan that he works out in your life, that everything, everything, not just some things, everything, how bleak, how black, how unbelievable the circumstances might find themselves around you, 
everything will conspire for your good and for your blessing because he is a faithful God. Faithful in the hard times, faithful in the good times. Every trial, every difficulty, every hurt, he will craft to our benefit. So I want to turn you to uh, the story of uh, the lady with the oil and Elisha. And um, I want you to see some real parallels here to what I've just said to you in Romans 8, 28. The, the wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha. This lady was a lover of God. She was married to a prophet. And this prophetic guy was one of the same guys that we read about who had called out, if you've been with us in the camp meetings, about building a new day in God, a fresh uh, place to dwell because the place where they're living was far too small for them. So this prophet was on fire for God, I am certain. I believe his family was on fire for God. They were serving the purposes of God. But the prophet dies. And um, she says, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he revered the Lord. Now the creditors are coming to take my two boys as slaves. So this lady loves God. She's called according to his purpose. Her husband had loved God and was called according to his purpose. Now let's just see the faithfulness of God and how we are to interact with God's faithfulness. I think sometimes we think things just fall out of heaven. That's never been the way of the Bible. Read the Bible and see how God uses man and women, men and women, to interact with him to walk out his faithfulness in their lives, to see it manifest. These things will happen as we walk with God, not as we sit in misery, but as we walk with God. Some of you need to hear that word. Don't sit in misery, walk with God, and let him prove himself faithful. Your servant says, she says, so Elisha said to her in verse two, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Here's my first point is don't ask, what don't I have? Ask yourself today, what has God placed in my hand? What do I have? A bit much like uh, when we were talking, and we will again this week from the book of Exodus, when the Lord says to Moses, what's that in your hand, Moses? It was just a stick. But as he throws it down and surrenders to God and takes it back up again, he finds it becomes the rod of God in which he works miracles. From that point on, he throws the stick down, but as he takes it back up again, it becomes the rod of God in his hand. And so in a similar way, the prophet of God says to this lady, what do you have? Not what don't you have, what do you have? In this time of, of difficulty in COVID-19, the Lord is not asking you what you don't have. But for all of us, however weak and insignificant we feel, there is something God has placed on the inside of us that he wants us to use and he wants to prove himself faithful. He's the God that is invested in us and as he uses what we've invested in and we use what we've invested, you'll start to see that the blessing will begin to flow. We're not sitting there waiting for God to send something from heaven. God has made a perfect investment in you in terms of gift, ability. And what he's saying to you this morning is what is it that you have not what don't you have. Don't keep telling me what you don't have or what somebody else has. What do you have? And so the prophet, she said, your servant has nothing except a small jar of olive oil. Elisha said, go around and ask your neighbours for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour the oil into the jars, each of it, fill each one and put it to one side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons and they brought jars to her and she kept on pouring. When all the jars were full, she and her sons, she said to her sons, bring me another one. But they replied to her, there's not a jar left and the oil stopped flowing. She went to tell the man of God and he said, see, go sell the oil, pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Man, this is an incredible miracle. Don't think here for a moment. She had a little jar of olive oil. Go and get something to pour it into the prophets, but not just a few. They made enough money for her to buy her sons out of slavery, which was a tidy penny, and for her and her sons to have enough money to live on. She made a whole lot of dough here. Not because she had a lot to start with, but because she used what she had under the instruction of the word of God, and she poured out of what she did have, 
and God filled and filled and filled and filled. As we are faithful with what God has given us, he will give us more and more. If you're faithful in a few things, the scripture says, see so I'll put you charge of many things. Can you imagine how many pots they borrowed and how much oil was produced? Enough to buy them out of slavery, enough to put the dinner on the table for a good few months, if not a good few years. God was at work. He was faithful, but he was faithful because the widow heard the word of the Lord, used what she had, and walked forward in faith. So as we walk forward in faith, God will be faithful. He's a faithful God and he wants to bless us this morning. He really wants to use us. I really love this story. It's very, very powerful, isn't it? How God can use what we have and not what we don't have to bring about a greater purpose in our lives. I just want to apply that just, just for a moment and then we'll pray. I think it's really, really important this morning that we get back to the reality of where we are. Maybe you're struggling um, financially, in which case I want to pray for you. I know that uh, for many of our church family, one or two have lost their jobs, but got jobs again, which is fantastic. And for that, we thank Jesus. But there may be some difficult financial days ahead and, and maybe we've not seen the end of redundancies and, and people in our church struggling in that road. Let me just tell you this morning, God is faithful. If he can look after this widow woman and her two little sons, he can look after you. And let me tell you, he will as well. He's your shepherd. We said that last week, didn't you? And you will not want. Maybe you're struggling with your health this morning. I believe God wants to be faithful to you and to give you strength. And I want to pray more than anything else for divine health for us. There's a greater thing than being healed, isn't there? It's being in divine health. And while this virus is still about, and we're wearing masks and socially distancing, there's still a possibility that maybe somebody from our congregation would get this disease. We don't want anybody to get this disease. So I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing upon us and a prayer of protection over our families and our friends. That God would keep us safe because he's a faithful God. And if any of us do have to go via that trial, that I'm, I'm going to pray that God's going to keep us through it. And we'll lose not one person to this horrible disease. Maybe you're just struggling with your emotions right now. I know for me, I'm not a very emotional person. Um, in fact, Claire sometimes says my heart's like a bit of a swinging brick. I don't know whether that's true or not. But what I will tell you is, this, is that these months have been difficult for all of us. They've been testing. And maybe for some of you, you're just struggling today with the whole concept of, is this the new norm? Is life you're never going to be the same again? Listen, let's just trust in the Lord this morning with all of our hearts and lean not onto our own understanding. If you start to think about things, your mind runs away with you. I said to you last week, if you have a problem sleeping, meditating the word night and day, make sure that you take a scripture to bed and think about it rather than worry about the concerns of the day. And don't go to bed on Sky News because that's a bad place to be. Go to bed on a scripture and encourage yourself in the Lord. We're, we're all, if we're honest, struggling a little bit at the moment. Because we're not locked down, but we're not let free either, are we? We're still not in the place where we want to be as far as church is concerned and, and serving the Lord in the building. But we still have to recognise that we are the children of God and, and we have to trust him. So this morning, let me pray as we go. Pray a blessing. Thank you for supporting the camp week. Thank you for enjoying the ministry. Let me just pray a blessing upon you and your household now. And then we'll go in Jesus' name. Father, this morning, the first thing I want to pray about is our finances. God, would you just keep us uh, financially well and healthy? Um, I pray for everyone in our church that needs a job, that they'd have a job. And that, Father, that um, as we bring our tithes into the storehouse, that we'd be blessed indeed. Thank you for the financial uh, encouragement and blessing that comes by being a giver. And so, Lord, I just pray that as we give this morning, that we will be given to us a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into our lap. As your word says, with the measure that we use, you'll measure it out to us. So, Lord, we intend to be givers and to give big in order to bless your heart and for, for in order for us to be blessed also because you're a faithful God. If we give, you give also. But bless those that maybe are struggling a little bit at the moment, worrying and fearful about redundancy. Give them your peace. For those that, Lord Jesus, just need to touch physically, would you bless them now? But I pray for all of us that are well, that you keep us in divine health. You keep us in that place where we are healthy and fit. And ready to face each day to serve you. 
Maybe for those who are struggling with their mental health, we pray in the name of Jesus that you just grant us your peace right now, that the peace that passes all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds. The peace that sometimes we have in our heart that we don't understand, the peace that passes all understanding, I pray that it would guard our hearts and would guard our mind right now in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we want to thank you for this time together. I thank you for that simple story of the woman that trusted you, stepped out in faith, and saw you become incredibly faithful to her and bring a blessing about in her life that perhaps she never thought would be there. And so I pray the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will rest upon us now and this week or until you come, until you call us back. So have a great week. Enjoy your time in the sun today. Let's hope it stops a little bit warmer. And uh, your bank holiday tomorrow. Uh, whatever you're doing, may the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.